Oh, great. Beautiful. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's really great to be here on the first community call of 2022. So as mentioned, I'm Brittany Ice Dennis. I'm coming to you live from Cleveland, Ohio. Ooh. Um, I've been with the IS, working with the ISC and gleaning from the knowledge base for the past two years. And I'm super grateful that this community exists. Currently, I'm working at Fannie Mae within their open source program office. This is a brand new office and we're working on lots of different initiatives within the space of the OSPO. But my first main task since I started back in October was to guide and help set up their inner source program. Inner source, it's changing the game when it comes to cross collaborations and building tools that impact a company for the better. And so the main goal that I would like to drive home today is that inner source opens up the concept of growth, career adjustments, company culture, and generally just making our day-to-day -day working environments better. So what can I say about the past two years that has not already been said? You know, who would have expected this? Nobody. I just hope at the end of the day, everyone's healthy and trying to stay as positive as possible, albeit in challenging times. And so the past two years during a pandemic and working nonstop whilst thinking everything's normal is, is super wild. And as speaking for myself, and I'm not sure that others can commiserate, I've been super productive within the world of work because I didn't know what else to do, but it also brought a lot of changes. And so, you know, going back to that statement, right now there are more positions open in technology than ever before. And people are really starting to take stock in what makes them happy and they're moving around. You know, we as technologists see that there is a lot of opportunities out there right now. So making moves to grow within one's career is happening. And I would like to think that, you know, we've all sat in our houses for two years, really, and change really does make sense since our immediate environment hasn't changed much over this time. And, you know, it's important to be happy and changes do help that. And this is what we want to see within our careers. You know, unfortunately, we all have to work, you know, because society says that we have to work. So why not be happy while doing it? So throughout all these moves, we are making changes to get to that point. So how does technologist happiness happen? You know, we need to have a great experience within our 40 hour work week. And there's ways to do that. And connectedness and collaboration adds to that particular experience. You know, you have open source program offices and inner source program offices are really similar and building on something great. You know, many times they're in the same division. You know, for example, at Fannie Mae, we are all in the open source program office, but we're standing up another facet of that, which is, which is inner source. And that's just due to transformation processes. You know, tooling is different too with OSPOs and ISPOs because you're, in an inner source program office, you're working within the firewall, um, you know, within your company's parameters. And so you have to kind of duplicate certain efforts at first. So, you know, you have to have strong governance documentations, metric portals, you know, different ways to identify different projects, but there's ways to do that to make it easier. So you, you know, we break down the silos to make room for innovation and, you know, if we're doing the same thing over and over again, it's demotivating, hence why people are moving around. And so that's just another reason to just reflect on your career and maybe potentially start making changes to get to that point of happiness. And, you know, cross collaboration, it, it does help avoid burnout. You know, sometimes we do need a break, you know, especially the past two years. If someone else is ready to step into your role so you can take a break, that makes life a lot easier. You know, the thing is something to think about over the past two years, have you avoided taking a day off because, you know, the pandemic and you have nowhere to go? Do you not think that anybody else can cover you due to the complications of your work? Or are you the only person that can do the job? You know, that, that sort of experience, that really needs to change. So, you know, inner source is changing the way that the industry operates. It's going back once again to the great migration with so many job opportunities arising, one thing that I've really noticed is the rise of the inner source program manager. You know, I've seen positions open up for ISPO partnerships at Comcast, Fannie Mae, Microsoft, Indeed, AWS, and beyond. You know, there's jobs channels within the inner source commons community, uh, Slack in instance, as well as the to-do group. And all of these positions are open and you'll see huge emphasis on inner source program management. 
you know, the intersource commons community is the gold standard for these practices. And when I joined the group, even though I'm not yet an official member, I'm working on my time, you know, there were 80 people in the general Slack channel and now there's over 1100. That's huge. That's incredible. And honestly, you know, I'm, I'm understanding most of you do probably spend a lot of time in these channels and, you know, reading through all of the great documentation and giving back to this community, which is great. But if you know people that don't, I, I think that they should join them. So what makes an inner source program successful? You know, there's certain roles that you can do. You have a community manager. They, we get all the parties together. We give consultations. We advocate for cross collaboration and beyond, you know, being a technical lead, you can create discoverable portals and projects. So that way it's easier for other people to start giving back to these things. You know, senior leadership is really important because they buy into the program and they can designate a soft decree, which is really good to get more people excited about it. You know, management, you know, you could join into an ISPO or even just as a technology manager in general, and start getting more people involved and factoring inner source into your general program plans. You know, that's, that's huge because a lot of times when we stand up a project, we don't necessarily, or what I've seen in the past, I don't want to generalize, what I have seen in the past is that inner source is not necessarily a part of that initial plan. And it could be, and that's a great career driving factor saying like, we can bring in cross collaboration. And then at the end of the day, you know, you're going to get your individual contributors. All of these roles within an inner source program are doing their best practices. It's going to make things easy for development and individual contributors to come in and give back. So this is almost like a personal story, you know, roles for non-classically trained engineers. I, I like using the word technologists because we're all technical people. And even if you can't necessarily code right off the bat, you're still insanely technical and <laughs> just existing. So I didn't start my career out in technology. Some of you know, I was actually an elementary school teacher, but through taking chances and going into an unknown space, I'm now working in a brand new open source program office within the financial sector. And so some days I just look back and I'm just like, wow, you know, like how did, how did I do that? You know, I, I, I don't even know, but so it's, being passionate about making a change for yourself and believing in yourself and knowing that you can take the chance and leverage the skills that you already have. You know, if you're a really strong organizer, if you're a really fast learner, you, you take the time to be an independent learner, which is great, you know? And then something I'd like to think, you know, if there's some managers or hiring managers or you wanna grow your team, it's, it's a good chance to hire someone that's green. You know, it, it, it takes a great opportunity and, you know, a bit of a risk to hire somebody that doesn't have all of the experience that they, you know, normally would in going into a technical engineering program management role. But if they're passionate about the work, there's, there's ways you can see where they can fit. You know, there are so many people wanting to break into technology you know, but they can't because they don't have the direct experience at working with a large technical company. But in time, we're gonna see a shortage of people that don't have those skills, you know, not that many people are going into these sorts of roles anymore. And, you know, we have a huge vast talent pool that's willing to learn. And I just think opening up these opportunities and giving people a chance is a, is a really, really good thing. So, but why is that, why is working in an inner source program office or an open source program office so desirable? You know, within my past experience, I can't believe it's been almost three years, working with like-minded individuals solving problems is incredibly rewarding. You know, we're the disruptors that try to make the company better as well as trying to make our technologists happy. We want to retain our talent and not have the talent just fly out the door all the time because that disrupts the entire flow of all of the culture that we're trying to build. You know, so we just want to make sure that we have clear guidance on how to create change. We want to bond through our code and processes. We want to empower people to be thought leaders. And it's just, it's really, a really great program and career to get involved into. And, you know, there's also non-monetary incentives, you know, you can showcase your project, you can get praise across, you know, the company, you can get actual consumption 
happening within the project itself. Your project could get adopted and then you don't even have to manage it anymore and you can start something new. And then what is, I think, in the beginning, the most important piece um, to get inner source motivated would be to actually set it up so you can get contributions back to your project. And so I think that that's pretty fantastic. But with that being said, you know, I want to just thank you all again for having me today. I, I hope that this was a fun talk and kind of gets people thinking. And you can find me on the, the Twitters or the LinkedIn or in the Inner Source Commons community Slack. And I just want to thank you all for letting me be here today. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you for that great presentation. And we'll be hearing more from Brittany in the Q&A um, after the next talk. So thank you, Brittany. Um, next, I would love to invite on Denise Cooper, who is the founder and chairperson of InnerSource Commons um, and has had many, many years experience uh, working uh, um, with InnerSource and in various organizations and helping people understand how it relates to people's strategy. So um, Denise, are you able to share your screen now or come come uh, turn on your camera uh, I can't turn on my camera because you turned it off yes I did you can turn Let's, it on <laughs> let, no I can ask you to start you should be able to start right now there That's we good. go there we <laughs> thank you great and, just a sec I'll get my share going wonderful thank you very much um, no worries after this next presentation we'll move into the Q&A so take it away Denise Great. Um, I am going to do 10 minutes on how InnerSource helps your employees. Um, there are so many topics to discuss in InnerSource, um, but this is the one that we're talking about this morning. So uh, if you have questions or if we're not touching your question, feel free to ask a question in the chat and we'll be really happy to talk to you. And then, of course, there's Q&A afterwards that's off the record. So uh, you could also ask there if you don't want to say who you work for. Okay. Um, First of all, InnerSource, we know, makes engineers happier. Um, obviously, not 100% of the engineers, but a substantial portion, and usually the most um, productive of your engineers will be really, really happy to see this switch after they get used to it. Um, and so, you know, because we know that, we're very bullish on seeing this adopted deeply uh, kind of around the industry. Um, it also, as Brittany was saying, offers you agency for your new employees, because the truth is new employees, these are kids that are just getting out of school, um, expect more agency because they've grown up on the internet. And the old fashioned ways of doing engineering, you know, are frankly kind of solely facing to them. And they do tend to just quit on you if they're not happy. So, you know, giving them a sane way to work in a more open way with more agency is worth doing. Um, we feel very strongly that collaboration shouldn't feel like combat. And a lot of the people that push back hard initially on InterSource have had bad experiences with mentorship where um, they're made to feel like, like there's a war going on inside the company. That's one of the reasons that we talk about silo culture as a bad practice at this point, because it's an us and them practice. And it sort of, you know, leads itself to competition for resources that doesn't need to happen. Um, the truth is, everybody should be working on the same team in a company, all of the code assets that are being built actually belong to the company. And attaching your ego to the code assets in any way other than I want to do the best I can to create an asset that's useful. Um, is probably misplaced, but it's also very human to, you know, be attached to the things you create. So this is a healthy way to get people to collaborate and share to the benefit of the company in addition to the employees. Um, and when I worked at PayPal, we worked hard to look for ways to increase participation. Um, open source, which InterSource is patterned on, uh, is based on enlightened self-interest, which means um, the people doing the work have to be enjoying or finding value in the process of doing the work if they're going to do their best work. And so we work, we looked for opportunities. And as an example, one of the things that we looked at was um, the senior engineers in the organization, when we tried to get them interested in collaborating out from their silos, was, were saying, well, why would we do that? And like, we're fine to accept contributions, to be, you know, contributor gatekeepers, 
and, and educate people that are trying to contribute into our important silo. But why would we spread out? Because, you know, we're senior and we know what we're doing. And after talking to them, we discovered that the one thing they were missing, at least at PayPal, was an easy way to signal to HR that they were hoping to become fellows someday. Um, for those of you who don't know, the, in general, most big organizations have two tracks of promotion. One is through managership and the other one is through individual contributorship. But the individual contributor path is often not well paved. And there may be some fellows that were hired at that level or, or near that level and then promoted. But for a small engineer to figure out how to get on that path, there was no way to do that. And these people were senior in their roles when we talked to them, but they still weren't on the manager track. I'm sorry, on the um, fellow track. And so we looked at ways with HR to make the fellow track, um, you know, entry into it uh, signalable by participation, voluntary participation in intersource in the contributing direction. So if you gained mastery in a certain number of the other silos around you, then you could be considered to be interested in the full stack and therefore interested in becoming a fellow. And that was a great way to get people interested, but there are others. Um, technical debt kind of accrues to uh, overly siloed organizations, because if all the members of a given silo leave for whatever reason, and we all know that the most common reason that people leave companies is bad, member, bad management. Um, the most common reason they leave a team is also bad management. So if they've got liquidity within the company to move around, they'll leave the, the code as an orphan code. And then there's a real problem. It's not easy to go back and pick up that code base expertise and try to figure out how to continue to serve that code. And that is a real problem for big organizations. So when we talk about breaking silo culture, we're not only talking about living, breathing silos that are cutting, undercutting people's ability to show what they know or learn, but also these abandoned silos that are just problematic from the get-go. Um, so taking on the challenge of orphan code is something that you can stimulate through Intersource if you set up the right kinds of incentives. And um, that is a really good idea. It's a really good idea. I'm starting to see companies doing really bad things with their orphan code. Now that everybody's working on continuous integration and delivery, it's actually quite common to see people containerizing orphan code <laughs> because then at least the deployment characteristics are consistent, but they still don't know what's going on in the code base. And that's, that's just terrifying to me as an engineering manager. Um, and then uh, the third thing is that it helps you prepare your employees for their own future. You do as an employer have a responsibility to your employees, not only to make them effective in your organization, but also to help them along their path. And most modern um, companies have ways for people to become educated in new methods. Um, Intersource is one of the best things you can do for your employees because it makes them ready to do collaborative development, which is becoming increasingly the norm across the industry. And, you know, it seems like it might be a good idea to hold on to your employees through, you know, obscurity means, but actually that is one of the surest ways these days to get, get incent them to go find another job. So it's better to give them the tools from within for, the, for their future. And um, when we were at PayPal, that, the first CTO that I worked under was really big on this message. Like we owe it to them to make them able to work in some of the really big companies who all are starting to use this method. Right now, Microsoft is deep into training all of their engineers to work this way. So if they're doing it, you know everybody's doing it. IBM has also got some major initiatives to get their engineers collaborating in the inner source way. So this will become the standard. And um, I believe, I have to believe that open source is the future. Even though um, we see little blips in the storyline, the truth is on balance, open source is faster and better at solving its own problems than any other way of engineering software. 
So helping them get to a place where they understand how to engage with open source, not just use the code, but actually water the commons so that those projects don't fall over from lack of resources or lack of, of you know, sufficient impetus. Um, that's a lot of why I started in source commons was I could see that this was the way forward for companies to learn how to um, balance the need for trade secrets and um, order within their engineering organization with the need to keep their employees happy and moving forward in the fastest and best possible way. And um, because we have such an emphasis on trusted committership, which is also common in the, in the best open source projects, uh, we find that you know, making changes is, is and, and responding to market issues is really easier if you have this setup. Because um, the truth is you can't write perfect code. No one can. Um, there's way more bad code within closed engineering organizations because it's hiding out there. Nobody's looking at it. Um, within open source, when an issue is discovered, it's almost immediately fixed. And um, so anyway, that's my belief after 22 years of working in open source. Um, so now I think we're going to get on to the discussion portion of the show, and um, I'm really looking forward to it myself. If you need to get a hold of me or you want to tweet about this project, um, Diva Denise is my Twitter handle, and you can find me at denise at intersourcecommons.org as well. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I haven't done one of these yet, even though I do intersource all the time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>